Hi everyone, in this video I want to talk about yesterday's Google Doodle because I watched a video last night by Jonathan Kleck and as you can see from this video when you when you turn this Google Doodle upside down it turns into a shark and to be honest I didn't really see anything in this Google Doodle before Jonathan Kleck pointed that out. I didn't think anything of it. I usually don't pay any attention to the Google Doodles, but once he pointed this out and, and then he pointed out what this man's hat, looks like it's his hat to me, like it has two flaps coming down. I'll go back to the original drawing, but it looks like a hat with two flaps coming down, or it could be his sideburns, as Jonathan Kleck said. I'm not sure what it is, but once he explained what that looks like in his ear, it, I realized something that um, I had actually understood from a, a Bible code, and I'll explain that a little bit later, but as always, there's a true and a false, and I believe that there's a, a positive aspect to this drawing as well. And what I believe this represents is the consummation of the covenant. And of course there's a good covenant and an evil covenant as I've mentioned before and I believe the evil covenant is going to be consummated with the mark of the beast. And that's definitely depicted in this imagery as well as Jonathan Kleck pointed out with all the, the sixes that form this tidal wave. And then you also have this, which is supposed to be the letter L, which looks like the One World Freedom Tower, or the One World Trade Center. And this actually, to me, looks like a hypodermic needle with this, I'm not sure what this is supposed to be at the top, this pointy structure at the top. And I've mentioned before how this also looks like the Super Bowl trophy, the LII Super Bowl that we just had, talked about how I believe the II looks like the Twin Towers, and then the trophy itself looks like a hypodermic needle, and then you have the, the football, which is made out of skin at the top, so it looks like it's being injected into the, the skin, which is the, the football. And so this to me looks like a hypodermic needle. The other thing is that you have this letter E over here, which I didn't even realize that this was spelling out the, the word Google. I had read some comments where they were saying that the rock spelled out Google, and I couldn't see it at first, but I saw it. I was able to see it a little while ago, but you see the, the G made, makes is made by these two rocks, and then the two O's, and then the other G and then the L and the E, but the E looks like a hook. And I wasn't really going to talk about the, the mark of the beast as much as I want to talk about the positive aspect of this, but I'll go ahead and point this out first. But if you put in the word hook, you see that you have five matches that come up. And one of those is coming up in Job 41, where it says, Canst thou draw out Leviathan with a hook, or his tongue with a cord, which thou lettest down? And I believe Leviathan is referring to, to the beast, to the, the system, the beast system, which is the, the mark of the beast. And then you have some other scriptures. This word is actually a different word for hook over here, but you have this instance over here in Matthew 17, 27, which I believe represents the years 2017, the Hebrew year 5777, and over here it says, notwithstanding, lest we should offend them, go thou to the sea and cast a hook and take up the fish that thou first cometh up, and when thou hast opened his mouth, thou shalt find a piece of money that take and give unto them for me. 
And so if you look at an image of Matthew 17:27, you can see what that would look like. You have the the hook over here and then the the currency at the time which was during the Roman Empire, which is the fourth empire. Of course, the the fourth beast in the end will be even more terrifying than the, the Roman Empire, but you see that this was a currency at the time. And then the fish is swallowing or has swallowed up this currency. And the fish represents Jesus because the the word fish is actually an anagram for the words Jesus Christ, God, Son, Savior. In Greek it's Jesus, Christos, Theos, Yos, Sotir. And so you have the first letter of each of these words makes the word fish, which is the word ichthys in the Greek. And so I believe the fish represents Jesus consuming this mark of the beast system or the the world empire system at the time because this was a currency the roman currency at the time but the fourth empire currency will be the mark of the beast in the end times and i believe the hook represents the mark of the beast because if you look at the word hook in the greek it's actually the same word that was used in job 41 and i'll show it to you there as well but you can see that it's this word over here. It's the word angistron. Strong's G44 means a fishing hook. But if you look at images of this word, well, actually, this is how I happened to notice it a long time ago, but I noticed it from one of the images, but it's in the definition as well. But what I had noticed is that and I'll just click on this other image over here because the the image was coming up in the same images that were coming up in the word that I talked about that was in Samuel 17 that I believe represents the the mark of the beast. It was actually a spear tip, but um, what I noticed is that the hook was actually a, a surgical instrument and you can see that when you look at the definition you can see that it says fish hook over here and this is the word angistron but if you look at the extended definition it says fish hook hook of a spindle surgical instrument okay so if you go back to 2 Samuel 21 which is what I was talking about in my video that was about the Obama portrait and this is a form of the word Cain it's the Strong's number 7013 and it only comes up one time where it's talking about one of these four giants that spawned off the giant Goliath and I had talked about how the word in the Greek was this word right here it says that he was girded with a new sword and instead of the word sword in the Greek it had this word right here which I looked at Google images and that's when I realized that this was some type of instrument that was used at the time and it sort of looks like a DNA strand the way it's coiled like a helix and I believe it was at that time that I noticed the images of the fish hooks as well and realized that it was a surgical instrument and so that's when I came up with the understanding of Matthew 17 27 which again you have the numbers 17 and 27 which I believe represents the year and this is when I realized that I believe what Jesus was talking about prophetically is the the mark of the beast system that he's going to consume or swallow up because he's the fish he's the ichthys and so this would be the fulfillment of 2 Thessalonians 2 8 among other scriptures where it talks about Jesus consuming the beast the Bible says that that he's an all-consuming fire and that he's gonna 
consume the beast or this beast system. And then you see that here in 2 Thessalonians 2 8, which again, I believe this represents the years 2017 to 2018. And in verse 2 7, it says, For the mystery of iniquity of iniquity doth already work only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way and I can break this down in, in the Greek but this is really talking about the appearance of the Antichrist I've explained that before and then it goes on to say and then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming and if you look at the word consume you see that it means to expend to consume spend money destroy so it's interesting that it makes reference to money over here but as you can see it means to consume and so I believe the fish represents Jesus consuming this mark of the beast system. Okay, so when you go back to this Google Doodle, you see that the lamb, which would represent the Christians, but it could also represent Christ because Jesus is the lamb of God. And then you see this hook where he's drawing in this mark of the beast system, which is also represented by the one world trade center and with all these sixes over here when you turn this upside down and so that the, this shark could also represent leviathan the beast system but it can also represent jesus consuming this system as well as is described in matthew 27 or matthew 17 27 but in addition, I believe it also represents the consummation of the covenant. And so that's the part that I want to explain next. Okay, and this is where it's going to get more complicated because I have a lot to try to explain and I'm not sure how much I'm going to be able to explain. I'm obviously going to have to make another video, but I'm not sure how many videos I'm going to be able to make before I can explain this but the other thing that I understood immediately once Jonathan Clegg explained what this looks like which I never would have noticed before he said that is that I believe this represents the consummation of the covenant and the reason is because I had done a table some time ago where I had put in certain words that I believe represent the the tree of life because I had made a video some time ago okay I might have talked about it a little bit in this video that was four parts that's called what happened in the garden exactly and then I made another video over here super moon to be Shavat a story about trees and so I might have explained it a little bit there but basically what I was trying to explain in these videos is that the story of the Bible is not just about the two seeds. It is all about the two seeds, but it's important to understand that the, the seed comes from somewhere. And so it's a story about two people which represent the tree of life. Of course, Jesus represents the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil, which is represented by Satan. So you have the two trees or the two types of DNA. And this is all really a battle over the bride, which is basically Eve. The bride is represented by Eve. And I've talked about before how when God made Eve, that he was building a house. And if you look at the details of this drawing, which I can't enlarge any, any more than this, but you can see that the bride is made up of all these people. And so the bride is female and, and Jesus is male. And this is the, the entire story of the Bible is the coming together of the male and the female. That's not a, a bad thing. That's a good thing. But the bride is made up of 
an entire community of people, but I'm just about out of time, so I'll have to continue in 